Good morning and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the newspaper. If you like the newspaper review, uh, we will have a couple of papers to take a look at this morning to see what's in the national dailies and where we are as a nation in spite of all that is happening. And as you know, we'll always have um, an analyst or someone reviewing the paper with us. But today we are going to have Bolahon Olojede, who is a public affairs analyst, reviewing remotely. He will join me via Skype. And for the papers, I'll begin with the Punch newspaper. And it says, despite Jenko's 200 Naira billion fund, gas shortages stalls uh, 23,800 uh, uh, megawatts. And that's on page 23, already displayed there. And the NCDC minister, NCDC boss, meeting Buhari over lockdown and Kano deaths. That's on page 11. As you can see, 2020 school certificate exams not cancelled. That's according to WAEC. That story is on page 7. Recapitalized discourse or risk pass sector collapse, TCN ones on page 24. And the big story there, it's uh, coronavirus. Nigeria desperately looking for test kits, says NCDC. That is on pages 2, 7, and 11. Uh, South Africa tests 161,000. Ghana has tested 1.6 already. Uh, Egypt, 90,000. Nigeria has got the least there with 10,061. And recall that Nigeria has a population more than these two countries. We'll come to that in a bit. Now, can serial deaths continue? BUK professor dies. And officials not responding, ex-NHIS boss says. Infected Nigerians will be treated in China, says federal government. That's for Nigerians who are infected in China. Fresh uh, 13 Togo returnees arrived semi. And we have a picture story there also, if you scroll down a bit. Yeah, thank you very much. It's already displayed there. Um, you will see filled sections of, um, I can't see, but well, you can find out first. That's a road somewhere in uh, the expressway Lagos. That picture was taken yesterday. Um, you can see the portion of the road, how it is. And then we have dollar sales for 450 naira in parallel markets as a business segment on page 25. Oyo to repatriate Lebanon-based indigen offered for sale. I'm sure you remember that story. It's on page 14 of the Punch newspaper. Gunmen abduct popular Ibadan Islamic clerics twins on page 5. Find out why. And gunmen kill Ekiti councillor, kidnap commissioner, and other on page 8 of the Punch newspaper. Lockdown, 39 strippers, uh, strippers and clubbers, 50, 581 others arrested in Lagos. They have defied the lockdown order. And that's the reason, pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, NJC writes Buhari, nominates Dogba Mesem as uh, a court president, Apex court president. That story is on page 13. I'll move on to my analyst now. Uh, Balahong, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Let's do the business as usual. Okay. Great. Uh, maybe we can start with a screamer, all right? Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, um, any close observer will have noticed that um, the NCDC seems to be struggling with throwing out those tests. Right. Uh, so uh, we've been wondering what exactly is going on, because increasingly, uh, it's either people are calling to get tested and the responses are not good enough, are not fast enough, mm -hmm. or people get tested, they're not, I mean, people's samples are collected and the test results seem not to be coming out as fast as expected. Mm -hmm. So people were already thinking that there's a problem in the, in the mix. Um, so I wasn't surprised yesterday when uh, eventually NCDC came out to say uh, they are they are out of testing kids. Hmm. If you if you also look at the fact that as Nigeria of uh, 200 million people, right. we have only tested about 10, a little over 10,000 people, uh, while some other African countries are close to 100, some over 100,000 tests. That's right. It will tell us that something is not particularly smooth about you know, the way we are conducting tests. Now, this will have an impact on the decision tonight if the president chooses to uh, address us on 
uh, extension of lockdown or not. Mm -hmm. Before, we were able to do tests. Now, if there are no test kits and our capacity to do tests have now been seriously constrained, um, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that there might be an extension of this lockdown. Right. It's, 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 it's a concern. I'm sure Under those circumstances. I'm sure like you and many of us, Nigerians are anxiously, anxiously waiting for that announcement, uh, hoping that it comes through tonight or sometime today. Hoping so. Yeah. Well, we're all hoping so. Um, I, I think it's also worth mentioning uh, that in circumstances like these, we do not expect that we'll wait till the last hour before we can plan our lives. Hmm. I, th I think the, the advisors to the president need to um, make him realize this. So whatever decision he needs to make, we can make it a day, two days, three days before the final hour of the expression of the lockdown. Hmm. Uh, this, this, this is the right thing to do. Essentially, uh, the NCDC have been doing a great job with daily briefing. Though in, in some other country, you see the president actually leading from the front when it comes to those uh, briefings. Right. Uh, but let's even say, I mean, NCDC is doing a good job. We don't mind that. But at least in matters like today's address, if there's going to be an address, mm. we expect the address to have come before the last hour. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I hear your point there. Uh, I mean, have you seen, I'm sure you saw that story. I just want to quickly get your reactions on infected Nigerians will be treated in China, says the federal government. That's talking about, you know, Nigerians who have already tested positive in China. And in fact, by, there are others also in the UK. Yes, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, the problem that the government has faced is the fact that the government needed hotels or accommodations to, to put these people. Once they come in, they are not expected to go into the country. From the airport, they go into these quarantine locations. I, I, I listened to the NCDC boss a couple of days ago when he was saying they are having major problems with hoteliers. Nobody, they believe that when you use their hotel to accommodate these people, it will roll their brand and will affect their business ultimately by the time uh, uh, this issue is off the table. So without being able to organize a proper quarantine places for them, um, that might be the excuse why they are saying, let them be treated in China or uh, where, and wherever they may be. Mm -hmm. in, in, in all honesty, it's also possible that a place like China will have a capacity, a better capacity for, for treatment. What we don't know is the fact that China has not been exa exa exactly nice to our people right. in the last few weeks. And if they will give these people the right treatment, like they will a citizen that they respect. Mm. That, that is my only concern about that. Otherwise, China has the capacity to actually uh, uh, treat these people. Right. Very relevant points that you raised there. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll say, Gualaho, could you just take one more uh, from there of your interest, and then we'll move on to another paper, because as you do know, time is uh, the business. Yeah, you have, you have several papers. Uh, I, I, I would like to talk about the, uh, the Naira trading at 450 to a dollar. Right. Uh, in, the parallel, in the parallel market. Markets. Um, I, 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 those kind of rates are merely speculative. Nothing mm -hmm. has settled. Nobody knows, and everything is still very fuzzy. So what you see right now are people taking some speculative position in the dollar market, mm -hmm. you know, believing that you will be this rate, you will settle at that rate, you will settle at the other rate. But the reality is that these are pure speculative things. You know, in a few months when things are beginning to get form and shape, mm -hmm. uh, that's when we'll actually be able to see what the dollars will do. Uh, in the in the parliament. But I want to quickly ask you, what's the implication of that? Say it's not uh, spe even uh, say the speculations are right. Uh -huh. What is the implication? <laughs> the implication is massive devaluation. Hmm. Uh, it will be as if we're going back to 2016. 2016, personally, I bought dollar at 512 or 515 wow. in 2016 hmm. in the parliament to meet some obligations uh, uh, to some of our vendors, uh, with my employer then. So um, that would be where we are heading if things don't stabilize on time. But I'm hoping that this we can get a hang on this coronavirus problem soon, sooner than later, mm. 
-hmm. and be able to manage, to be in control of what this exchange rate will be to a very to a certain extent. The control is to a certain extent. Because think about the fact that what all the things that will help us have a good grasp on the control are not exactly there. Mm -hmm. The reserve is dwindling all the time. We're not selling oil, the oil tankers are all over the place, and that is the source of 90% of our foreign exchange. So there are challenges out there. But as at now, nobody knows what dollar will settle out in the parallel market. Everything is purely speculative. All right, Balaho, I share in your hope. Now let's move on to the Nation newspaper. And it says, um, the big story there is, it will be displayed, I know, uncertainty over lockdown as Nigerians await decision, just what uh, Gbolaho and I were talking about. And Dogban Mesem gets NJC's a nod as PCA, 69 others tipped for, for the post. That story is on page two. And IMM's approval of $3.4 billion loan tied to exchange rate review on page two also. And Ola Kunri suspect test positive for COVID-19. That's on page three. Uh, 13 Nigerian returnees from Togo arrived in Seme. Uh, SSE not cancelled, says Wayek. And um, right behind, uh, below the screamer, Buhari meets Health Minister, NCDC, DG. And test kit shortages hit Nigeria. And if you scroll down, there's a picture story there. Um, this thing came up, I mean, interestingly, over the weekend. We don't know what uh, creature is that, but anyways, it was afloat. And the citizens were told not to, uh, not to eat of it. But anyways, you can see picture story of people having a fair share there. Well, that story is uh, on the front page, but it's, um, I believe it's inside uh, the newspaper there, somewhere there. We also have, yeah, Fisting on the Wheel. It's on the front page, rather, and continued on page two of the Nation newspaper. To your right, again, is the global figure of uh, the coronavirus. You can see it. And then the local figures to the left, uh, to the right and to the left there, displaying where we are uh, globally and where we are as a nation. And lastly, more deaths throw Kano into panic. And court convicts pastors, three imams, 68 others for lockdown violation. Uh, Golahon, if you can hear me, I'm tempted to say, shall we begin from there, if it's okay? Yeah, I, th I think it's the right place to start. Actually. Okay. Uh, the, the, the kind of death um, is, is becoming a, a worrisome issue that we need to get to the bottom of it. Mm. Uh, and this is very important because of the implications for context. If the people that are dying, we have been told there is more than the usual number of deaths happening within a short period. Mm -hmm. And some of those people are even prominent people. We need to know what killed them. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the implication for the number of contact that these people might have had. We need to do contact tracing. Right. If we cannot do contact tracing and fish out these people, things will get out of control. Mm -hmm. Kano is so, so peculiar um, because I learned that apart from, uh, you know, that there are cultural and religious issues that may preclude a, a post-mortem. Yeah. When someone has died, and you don't even know how the person died, uh, but the religion says he must be buried before sunset, and mm. that person had to be buried without conducting the test and determining how or what killed the person. We have a gap right there. So it will involve the leadership of Kano State, from the governor to the religious leaders. The, the role of the religious leaders in this matter, in a place like Kano, is extremely crucial. Mm -hmm. Much more than you can see, say, in the South. And that is because of the influence that religious leaders wield in these societies. They must be able to cooperate with the government to ensure that the government has a grasp over what is going on. The, the information on the social media right now is not good about the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, religious leaders' attitude to COVID in a place like Kano. It's as if quite a number of them don't even believe That's right. that coronavirus is in town. Mm -hmm. If they don't believe it's in town, that means you're con going to have a continuous flouting of the distancing issue, of the hand hygiene, and 
it could just be a total mess. I mean, so we need, we need these religious people to cooperate at this time. Mm. I agree with you there that it's really worrying because even this morning we had the commissioner of information from Kanu, Mohamed Garba, and you know, those were one of the things, issues that we raised about sensitization. How aware are the people? Uh, because as you do know, experts are already saying that we are, we are, we have gotten to the stage of community transmission which we are not sure what is going on there. Even, you know, the commissioner says they are waiting for uh, the results. Why they say uh, the cause of death is meningitis, acute malaria, and um, uh, something else I, qu I can't quite remember now. But, you know, yeah. I, I agree you, with you. You know, it, it is easy for people to... Um, we, we, don't, we don't want to get political about this issue. Right. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we, we don't want to get sentimental or political about these issues. If we're talking about citizens' education on COVID, in a place like Kano, the role of the religious leaders is still very crucial. They are the people who can stand on the podium and speak to 1,000 people, and they will believe them hook, line, and sinker. Right. So their role is critical, and they must work if we're going to get any hang on this matter, we need to get them to work with the leadership, with the other leaders in that society to help us with COVID-19 in Kano and, and other parts of the North as well. Yeah. All right, Bolaho. I would say uh, we have to move on to Guardian uh, newspaper in the interest of time. And um, it would be displayed shortly, I believe. It says, confusion over federal government rights palliatives for Southwest. Is displayed there on your screen and is on the front page, but is continued on page six. And Kano COVID-19 Center remains shut as strange deaths continue. On the front page there, PDP urges probe presidential visit uh, panic in um, Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital over COVID-19 suspects death and modern law hospital trade words. You remember that story? It's on the front page, but it's continued on page uh, eight. Police arrest three killers of Catholic seminarian in Kaduna on page four. And U.S. shuns WHO's efforts to accelerate new COVID-19 health technologies and orders on page four. Ebony um, unbounds journalists as media group berates governor on page uh, three there, I believe, and secretary. There's a picture story also. If you scroll up a little, there's a picture story of uh, the secretary to the Plateau State Governor, Professor Danladi, addressing uh, some people there as the state government begins returning the children to their state of origin. I believe these are al almajaris. Yeah, uh, you can see uh, that very strong picture there displayed on the screen. And lastly, to the left, we have the figures, COVID-19 figures. And as you do know, uh, the figures have been updated uh, today. All right, um, Balaho, let's take this, and it's going to actually be our last paper. What's catching your interest there? Uh, the the Almagiri thing um, is, is of interest uh, mm. to me. Um, we, we, we have created this people, and we're going to have to deal with this problem we have created. Right. I am just hoping, because now a place like Kano is saying, I'm going to return all these Almagiris to their mm -hmm. state of origin. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that they are working closely with these states of origins to ensure that there are provisions for possible quarantine. Uh, I learned the state was saying they will use uh, the IYC camp, camp to quarantine right. this one. Because if we don't do that, if we don't quarantine those people, and you took 400 people from Kano and you dumped them in Jigawa, and we don't know their COVID status, we might be playing with fire. Right. These are people, they don't have homes. They don't have jobs. They don't have anything. They just roam the street morning till night. Mm -hmm. So it is a very dangerous thing, and we must watch it. Otherwise, um, it might be another source of ballooning this problem that we already have on our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's uh, with uh, the, the uh, margarines. I think there was another thing about rice palliatives. Yes. I, 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 I read somewhere that... Um, the rice taken to Oyo State were bad, weevil infested. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what that tells me is that, you see, we seize all these products. 
and we keep them in storage for donkey period and they go bad. Right. Who does that? How does that help anybody? It doesn't make sense. When these things are seized, they should be dealt with when they can still be useful. If you, and if you don't want to deal with them, burn them. Mm -hmm. But burning doesn't even make sense, if you ask me. In a country that still produces only about 55% of its own rice consumption. Okay. So if you have seized them, they are illegal things, auction them. Let it still get to the people. Let them be able to eat it. Even if it is for, you know, chipe chipe, just auction them. Let mm -hmm. people have a benefit of it. Right. Now we have stored them for donkey period. They have gone back, and we said that is what we want to use for palliative. People will reject it. That's right. It's insulting, and culturally, it is insulting. All right, Bolaho Olojede, thank you very much. Uh, this is where we're going to call it a wrap, actually. Thank you okay. for your time. And as we say, please do keep safe. Thank you for having me. All right. And we will do this again here on Plus TV Africa, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. Easter time. I am Amaka Okoye Insane. You too. Stay safe out there.